morning guys, I'm out here in farm country, Fender County, North Carolina. Five miles south of Burgall. Head down to take a look at a electric furnace. It has a no heat call on it. Although it's kind of nice today, it's gonna be 70 something outside, but tomorrow's gonna be 40. So they're concerned about their heat. They've been having a few problems with their blower. Uh, they got a weak capacitor. I went and checked it out for them, but they didn't have the money to fix it yet. Uh, so I told them I'd, I'd come back and they're ready to fix it, I guess, now that it's not working at all. But, so we'll take a look at it. See all right, guys, this is our electric furnace. Power's off. We'll open up the control cabinet and take a look inside. This capacitor was weak last time we were here. We'll go ahead and recheck it. Probably needs to come out. I'm sure it needed to come out last time, but it may really need to come out this time. So we'll go ahead and open that up and take a closer look. Our capacitor, which is a 7.5 microfarad, is reading a little weak at 6.6. .6. And what that'll cause is the blower to run at a higher amperage and a lower RPM, which in turn will trip the limits on these heat kits and of course cause it to not heat. So we'll see if that's occurring. Uh, but we definitely need to replace this capacitor. But I'm gonna go ahead and put the old one in place and test out and see what happens to these limits. All right, we have our meter set up on two different heater legs. There's a total of three 5kW legs, nominally, we'll say. It's not exactly 5kW. So it's about a 15kW furnace. So I have amp clamps on two of the three legs, and I have amp clamps on both sequencers, because one of them's a double stack and one of them's a single stack. So we'll make sure that both of them are working, and then we can check the limit switches by putting the voltmeter across them. The heat should be calling relatively soon. So we should see the blower kick on and the heat strips kick on. They did kick on, but the blower did not. Definitely not a good thing. It will definitely cause a lot of smoke and scary things to happen. All right, now I've set it so that the blower will come on automatically in the on position. So let's go ahead and flip these breakers on again. There we go. I have to figure out what's going on as far as the blower, whenever the heat's calling. It's a little difficult to see back there, guys. So we have a six pin relay being used as a blower relay on the base of it at the bottom down there. And I'll try to put a little picture up over on the side. It has our green and common going as far as the low voltage signal for fan. When it energizes the coil, it allows power to pass to the fan. During the off cycle, when that coil is not energized, it allows a path for the heat strips to energize, sending power directly to the fan. Since this is an electric furnace, that's how they work. Uh, unfortunately, this one is not switching back, and well, it's not switching back all the time, so where the, uh, the fan will come on when the heat strips come on. So we're going to take that blower relay out and change it because it is obviously not working. We are back on our electric furnace. I think it's Evcon. The name tag is missing there. But we're going to change out the fan motor relay, blower relay, six pin. And we're also going to change out the sequencers. And the sequencers is more along the lines of some of the descriptions of the problems that they've said they've had as far as the heat not coming on and the fan motor not coming on. Uh, I know the blower motor relay stuck one time while I was here last time. But just some of the uh, leeriness I have about some, some of the things they've told me make me want to go ahead and switch these sequencers out before they cause another problem. The first thing we're going to change is our blower motor relay right here. On the bottom, you'll see a green and black wire. That's common. The green wire is the fan. Low voltage is 24 volts. On the top, you'll see two rows, normally closed and normally open. Normally closed will be the power coming in from the top of the sequencer to the fan motor. So if there's no call for fan and the heat strips energize, it will then energize the fan motor. And the normally open switch whenever the 24 volts from the green wire energizes that coil. And that would be in a call for air conditioning. So air conditioning is high speed and heat is, I think, medium low on this particular machine, but typically a lower speed. So that's what we're going to work on first, switch it out, uh, much the way that we set up the infamous Goodman blower relay, except for typically those are on air handlers, 
and utilize the same speed instead of two different speeds. As we look at this relay, we can see some of the specifications for it and then the diagram. As you see, it has a 24 volt coil. Keep that in mind. There are 120 volt coils and 240 volt coils, and I have bought them by mistake before. And you learn your lesson, and they won't work with 24 volts. They just won't energize at all. And if you do the reverse, you end up frying your relay if you put 240 to a 24 volt coil. As you see down on the end, there's a schematic. Numbers 2 and 4, which refer to the pins on top, are normally open. As you can see, the magnetic contacts are away, and it's closed on 5 and 6. So 5 and 6 would be the route for your heater, because it's normally closed. And 2 and 4 would be the route for your blower speed for cooling, because it's normally open. It's then energized by a fan call, which would be sent by the thermostat. So we're going to go ahead and put this bad boy in and wire her up and move on to the sequencer. All right, we have our new blower relay in. We're gonna move on to removing these old sequencers and replacing them. They come as a one unit. You can see over here. We're gonna go and take the old ones out and put those in. <laughs> Alright guys, we have our new sequencers in, all wired up at the base. You can see the white wire coming in right here. That is a control voltage, that is our W signal, basically just like a gas furnace. At the base of it, we can see over here, it's our common wire, and both sequencers, the 5K and the double stack 10K have a rod soldered in between them so there's no need for a jumper like there was on the old sequencers. A couple of things of note, most of these wires go to the heating elements. Here you have a leg feeding the blower relay for the cooling tap speed and then at the base you have this blue leg here feeding the heating tap speed. So basically the heating tap will energize if this sequencer closes and sends power down this blue wire. As long as there's no call for G. If there's a G call, it'll go to the cooling tap speed, which is high. So we're going to fire this thing back up and make sure she's working and we should be done. We have our meter set up again. We have the field piece set up with the blower voltage. Whenever we close that top leg of that sequencer, which have 240 volts. And we're also measuring amperage on the 5KW sequencer at the same time. So we'll actually know if two of them close through that one meter. The amp probe meter is on the remaining heating element to make sure it comes on. So we're gonna power things back up, make sure everything fires off, and uh, hopefully it'll be finished. All right guys, the unit is set to heat. We should energize the first sequencer, which will bring on the first element and the fan motor. And then subsequently, other sequencers will energize. still on at 20 amps, 243 volts. What I'm going to do now is turn the heat off, make sure it shuts down properly, and then put the fan in the on position to make sure it runs properly at the cooling speed. We are running at our cooling speed now. As you see, we are running at 3.6 amps, which is still well below our maximum rated amps. 
of four. So we're going to shut it down again and put it back in the heat and make sure it fires off, and then we'll let her go in heat. I think we're done with this one. Oh, four ton AC outside. We'll probably see it before it's too long. It's been around for a long time. All right, guys. I'll see you on the next one.